palm trees and 80 degrees This place is something to see Salt water air you can taste in the breeze And the birds sing a sweet, sweet song Ocean view, feet in the sand Mountains behind me living off the land Lost track of time, that was part of the plan It's summer all year long People come from miles and miles just to be here Hey everyone, this week we've got a double whammy for you. Marfell's Beach Dot Campsite and then a pretty short drive over the hill and around the bend to Ward Beach, which is a donations campsite on some private property. But this is our second video in the South Island and we're already loving the scenery. Hey everyone, we have spent the last couple of nights here at the Waterley Racecourse in Blenheim, which is a park over property, 12 bucks a night. It is very, very busy here and um, surprisingly too, there's got to be at least 70 caravans here, motorhomes I reckon. But today we're heading off to Marthals, which is a dock campground, so we're about to hit the road. Man, the truck's filthy, it so needs a clean from when we were out at White's Bay going out to Robin Hood. And at the time of this recording, it still hasn't been cleaned. It's had a hose down at least. Now, Blenheim and the Marlborough area are pretty famous for growing some delicious tasting award-winning white wines. So we drive past a lot of vineyards and some very cool scenery. And I'm just going to say that now so we can put on some nice music for the drive. I know, I know, we'll run the race before us. I'll go, I'll go. Okay, so we have arrived at the Marfell Beach dock camp. There's actually fresh water, only one fresh water tap that's filtered just as you enter over that little bridge. I've noticed over the years that all the dock camps say boil or treat water first. At this campsite it said on the main sign that there was drinking water on site, then all of the taps actually said boil first. I imagine the water taps here all come from the same source, but it's just a safety guard for dock. Either way, we do have a filter before we put water into our tanks. Lots of really beautiful beachfront campsites along here. They are a little bit sloped towards the ocean, so we did need to use a double blocking to get us up level here. Checking this beach out, it was obvious there had been some drastic changes. But in 2016, Kaikoura had a pretty big earthquake. A lot of the ocean like rose way out of the sea. And this beach was affected too at Marfells here. And um, I wonder how much of this land here used to, well the water used to come all the way up. Because now low tide, wow, that's like miles away from, from the, um, miles away from where people are camping. So I did find out that the water used to come all the way up to the sandbanks, right by where we're parked in the caravan. I guess it does mean that we have a pretty big beach to play on now. But crazy to be able to see the effects of what that earthquake did to this part of the country. You can see how shallow it is here because Toby and Jade are like way over there and it's only just past their knees.
from a very sunny Marthals Beach. It is beautiful here today, sunny and warm. We were thinking this morning, like when we were at the last beach at Whites Bay, that was a south facing beach. This beach we're facing north and the next beach will be facing east and I'm pretty sure in Kaikoura you can get a west facing beach. So good start, good. These hills are all so dry and the 10 day forecast is for no rain. So we haven't had any rain since we've been in the South Island so far. So that is very, very good considering how the North Island's just been getting hammered from rain. So South Island this summer is where it's at. Definitely really been feeling for our friends living in the North Island having a terrible summer. Sorry guys. But then we were off for a walk down to the pier where there's a salt water intake for the salt lake at Lake Grasmere. So staying here we've just used it. Oh! <laughs> Not nice in your foot, bare feet man. <laughs> that wasn't a good start to the walk, two thorns stuck in my foot. So I'm gonna go back get a needle and dig them out. Got the old sewing kit out and got the bugger out. Alright, time to catch back up to the family. So we have got the dock pass, I think it cost about $560 for our whole family for 365 nights at dock campgrounds. Normally you're restricted to one week at each spot, but we definitely plan to get our money's worth on that. It works out to be about 10 nights of paying to be at a dock campground, but we get the whole year, which we will use a lot. There's a lot of dock campgrounds in the South Island. So yeah, it's costing us nothing to be here again. If you like remote camping, the dock pass is definitely gonna save you a lot of money. The further along this beach we go, the steeper it gets and the more dumpy the waves. It's actually pretty hard work, it's super soft on this ground. So this is an intake of salt water into the salt water lake behind us for salt works. You can see there's like a pump in there pumping water through, you can see it bubbling away. So that's the intake there. Not too sure what I'd rate this walk out of, uh, pretty hard going. Not really that much spectacularness here. Hmm. Alright, time to start the walk back I think. Right, we're... <laughs> All right, we've got a bit of a four square competition going on. It's very windy down at the beach today, so we're making use of the road. All oh, right, Toby, what are you? Yeah, this morning Soph got up at 5, watched the women's netball and then went for a 23 kilometer ride around Lake Grasmere from here. And when she got back I ran out to the Cape Campbell Lighthouse, which was about uh, 13 and a half kilometers. So it's been a pretty good day. After high tide it's worth going down to the beach to see if any cool treasures have washed up. Often there's quite a few cool things to find. Pretty good standard dock camp, um, got toilets, cold showers, uh, there is some water available, plenty of rabbits around, look there's one right now. It's not really uh, a lot of places to get water along this coast until you get to Kokoda, so we are going to fill up here and head to Ward. You can see that there's plenty of places to camp, so a quick water fill up and we were back on the road on our way.
this place is pretty awesome. Uh, so they've got these removable fences, so we, you can get some wind protection. We're expecting a bit of wind, so we're going to move this fence and uh, get into here. <laughs> this time my reversing with the time lapse on wasn't quite as helpful, although there wasn't as much room to manoeuvre, but I definitely didn't get this one in on the first attempt. Ward Beach is a dead-end road with a long drop toilet. The beach, in my opinion, isn't very safe, and this coast often has high wind and rough seas, but it's a great spot to watch and explore. Ward Beach has its own near-perfect round boulders that you can go and check out just a short walk, but I think our kids enjoyed more climbing on all the rocks and watching the waves smash against them. There are apparently seals all along this coast so I went for a bit of an extra walk along this super soft gravel to see if I could see some seals at the other end of the beach. There wasn't just one or two though, there was quite a lot and they were so cool to look at. This seal here was living his best life, laying on the rocks upside down, snoring away, he wasn't even disturbed by me being there. I tell you what, you just have the feeling that you are just so small when you're out in a wild place like this. Like there is no one and nothing around here. And that sea is wild. Man, you go for a little walk and the place just fills up while you're gone, eh? Look at that. It's cold, so we're being hot chocolate. <laughs> it is not a very nice day out there today. We had the storm kind of rolled in last night. You might have seen it in the video yesterday down at the beach. The grey clouds in the back distance there. It's rough, rough out there. We had our mate Garth turn back out of those, come to find us here at Ward Beach, not too far from Blenheim. So he's over in his caravan right next to us with his dogs. Now this dog is Zeus and I've always wanted to see those dogs with two coloured eyes and Zeus has a brownie eye and a blue eye. Can you see it? Garth's been up early this morning doing some baking for morning tea. Look at those scones. Oh yeah. Mate, they look good. Toby, come here. Okay, so me and the kids are going to go hike up this big hill behind us. We want to climb Mount Fife when we're in Kaikoura, which is pretty big. That's 1600 metres or like, you know, over 4,000 feet, so we need to get some training in, but it's garbage day for weather. So off we set on our walk into the wind up that hill. There's no better day, it's time to get away, I want to see it all. The world is open wide. Getting a bit of elevation now. There is absolutely no wind where we currently are, which is, I don't know, we're all getting a bit hot now. But it wasn't going to be long until the wind was starting to get seriously scary windy, like the kids were almost blowing over.
So the afternoon activity, Mel and Garth had brought out some paint so that the kids could add to the rock garden of painted rocks at the campsite. They did some pretty cool designs. Alright, because it's a cold and kind of stormyish day today, we are having a lovely vegetarian curry for dinner to warm up our insides so that we're nice and warm and give us some good hearty food to eat for dinner tonight. Oh, a big knife. <laughs> What's on the menu for dinner tonight, Garth? Not a lot tonight, we've got a few patties. Uh, Is that you know, paneer? Is that paneer um, cheese? Halloumi. Halloumi. Yeah. How's the day been, Soph? Hey, be kind. I've been really tough. <laughs> Look at me. Okay, we've got a bit of drizzle rolling in. Bit of drizzle rolling in for pack up day. So we are heading off Kaikoura direction. See you there. Bye, Garth. See ya. When will we see you next? Uh, we'll catch you somewhere down here. Bye, Valley. Next time we have some amazing stuff to show you as we head to Kaikoura. Kaikoura is one of those towns I think I could easily live in. It's an outdoors paradise with diving, hiking and wildlife. We see seals and dolphins. It's going to be a good one. But we'll see you then. <laughs>